Let's you mute the children out. Yeah, uh, it's your four area code. I'm going to mute you out if you. There's a fair amount of noise coming from Marshall. Hey, Marshall, you got to mute out. Okay. We're fine now. So, okay. Patrick, you're going to surprise us today. Well, basically, uh, yesterday I got a, uh, a penalty notice from uh, the IRS, and I took a little time going all through it last night trying to figure it all out and what we've been doing wrong with it. Uh, we're right on doing the money orders and that and studying this uh, item, we need to send our money orders into uh, the, the item came from basically was sent out from the Department of the Treasury Internal Revenue Service at P.O. Box uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay? Department of the Treasury, Internal Revenue Service. But the payment is to be made to uh, Internal Revenue Service, Kansas City, Missouri. And I'm sure that's what a lot of people have is, uh, and it doesn't say Department of the Treasury. It just says Internal Revenue Service. The fictional or the corporate IRS goes out and puts liens against our assets or puts these fraudulent claims against us, charges and everything else. We have to take and we have to bring our ship into harbor and offload some cargo. So, we do a money order, it gets placed in a warehouse in the Treasury because the checks are made out to the United States Treasury. Okay, someone's got to mute out there. I just mute out the the chat. Okay, okay. So, we get into, we come into the dock. We offload our cargo for the amount that they want with a money order and send it over to the United States Treasury. Okay, we take it from our American uh, citizen ship using our EIN or our routing number, which is our Social Security number. Our account, our ship number is our registration number, certificate of live birth number. So we take this and we deposit it into the warehouse at the United States Treasury. Now everybody's happy, okay? The problem we have is that basically we, if you continue reading most of these documents, okay, it comes down and it says, uh, if you wish to contest the assertion of this penalty, you must fully pay the entire penalty and file a claim for refund with the IRS within three years. Why three years? Because after three years, it can be claimed as abandoned. If you don't claim it back. Now, we're in admiralty out here. You need to be in admiralty. No other situation will give you any protection. Sovereignty, like I said, is basically an isolationist. And basically they will throw you in isolation confinement if you want to claim sovereignty. But admiralty is where we have to be at. On the land. You can go and watch the Pirates of the Caribbean. For the vast majority, the admiralty was in the fort or the uh, building upon the land. Only when they went out uh, to sea in their warships 
did they did they go out and try and protect things that otherwise they were on the land? Okay, so we have to come in. We offload some of our cargo, and then we come back in, and now we can claim it. You can claim it with the 1099A. Okay, as an acquisition to acquire it back because basically all taxes, income taxes out here, are a tariff tax. And all tariff taxes are owed to the Admiralty, to the nation. The main Admiralty is the nation. Okay, and we are a permanent resident or a principal resident or a protected resident out here. So we are a president of our admiralty upon the land. We're also the master of our ship when it goes to sea. But pretty much we're going to be really on land most of the time. So we have three years to claim this back. If we don't, they're going to claim it. Now, when the assets are brought off of the ship into the warehouse, they are going to be discounted into the monetary system that's out here because it's a postal monetary system and we do not get the full value. We get a discounted value for our real assets. So when you make the claim with the 1099A and basically uh, even civil penalties, all civil penalties have to go back to the Admiralty. They don't go to uh, the corporations. Okay, that's a misnomer that basically they have a right. They can only claim it if you abandon it. But you as the Admiralty have to come in and claim it. Then since they've given us a discount, we also have to do a 1099 OID. So if you do not have any 2014 1099 OIDs, 1099As, and 1099Cs, and uh, some 1096 forms, you better get them ordered tomorrow. Okay? Don't lollygag around. There's the phone number. If you go onto the site, uh, IRS website, and look at the forms, the phone phone number is right there. You can even do it online. And I would do it both ways. That way you'll get a double dose of them. Now, you can move, go in and move assets over to the Treasury through this uh, account and have it put on deposit. Then you can come in and do a 1099A and claim it out of that account with the Treasury. You can do this through the IRS. Your sil- or our postal money or our envelopes, $300 penalty envelopes, instead of sending them to the court, I should have been sending them to this IRS in Kansas City. Okay? Uh, then we would turn around and come in and uh, claim those that back. We could do an OID. I don't have my 1099As right now, so I'll just do a 1099 OID for that $900, and then VA for the real, for the other side of it. So, and basically, I will say that, hey, all civil penalties all come back to the admiralty. So, uh, and all income taxes come back to the admiralty. Now, let them try and fight that one. 
Because, see, they can only claim it when we abandon it. Otherwise, it's still ours. Hopefully that makes a little sense to people out here and why you've been arguing things, okay? We've been told not to, uh, 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 that we can't have a resident and that we can't be the owner and that we can't uh, utilize the uh, zip code in any way. We have to identify the zip code, the federal zone, that we are outside of that federal zone. We have to claim a resident. We have to have a permanent fixture upon the land. It's not a federal zone resident. It's our living resident on the land. But we're located outside their federal zone. And then we are the owner for our lifetime. Only the living can ever own anything. No fiction, not even that hocus-pocus God that everybody thinks is floating around out there, can own anything. So I hope that makes a little more sense to some of these people that we've been misled and some of these people just never get it because they don't understand how to read the Bible. But all this stuff is right in the Bible. Our postage is prepaid if you've got a passport. Also, we have an exemption on the back of the Social Security card. Uh, You can use that as your uh, prepayment for the postal system because they've been using uh, our assets out here in the postal world. So by writing liens against our assets Mm. all these years, this payment, especially if you've gotten a passport, is basically in uh, Roman mythology is when you wanted to go to hell or Hades, you had to pay the boatsman in real substance. And you paid for that passport. That passport will take you to hell and back. The Audie Murphy movie, To Hell and Back. Okay? So, the Pirates of the Caribbean had very key components in understanding about admiralty. You're not going to find this in the statutes or in all their codes. So don't try and go and look in their codes to try and find this. Go to the movies. That's where you'll find it. Or go to the Bible. That's where you'll find it. Now we Like I said, we'll do a money order and have them deposit it into our account. Our passbook, our postal passbook savings account held there at the treasury in the warehouse. Okay, that's a nine-digit number. When you get this penalty that I got, basically there's a nine-digit number there. Uh, On the one side, it's got my Social Security number, then it's got a KV, then it's got uh, my four-digit first letters of my last name. Then it's got another six-digit number. Two digits, space, uh, another digit, zero, space, and then another six digits. In most cases, it's going to be the year and then uh, a number behind that. In most cases, the ones I've got are the year and then one, two behind it. 
So they identify that warehouse account that you have both by your Social Security number and then uh, which volume or what book they need to go to. And that's uh, the year and that other number that they have behind. And that's your account uh, in the warehouse. So, nine digits. You need to look for these nine digits that they have out here. Even your state will use a nine-digit system. The state, if you have state income tax, you pay them, and then basically uh, you have to put a claim in using the 1099-As and OIDs to retrieve the funds back from the state because you are a state uh, admiralty citizen. You're not a corporate citizen. You are a land residential citizen. And even the state tariff taxes and everything charges have to come back to the admiralty of the state. <clears throat> Hopefully you people understand this admiralty uh, is key in all of this stuff, okay? You're the admiral. Okay? In the whole process. But you're also the president. Either the principal or a man, the principal president. You take off the P off of principal and put it in front of resident, you got the president. Okay? So you're a president of your domain. A woman is a protected resident. So. She can take the P off of protected and put it in front of resident. She now becomes also a president resident. Okay? And we were told in school that everybody can be a president. Even in Section 3 of the Expatriation Act, in there, it all talked about president. It didn't say United States president. It didn't say uh, president of the United States. It just said president in there. What act was that? The Section 3? Section 3 of the Expatriation Act. Oh, Expatriation Act. Hey, Patrick, okay. you know... All these states have all these CAFR funds. If they were putting the money back no. in people's accounts, they would be going in the accounts, not their CAFR funds. Yes, so when, but we have to claim those back within three years, right. or else they claim it. See, all taxes, like I said, all taxes, all charges are owed back to the land or to the state, not to the corporation, they can only claim it after three years of our abandonment. That's what was the key thing on the back of that uh, penalty. Do we need to wait until we get a penalty letter, or can we put in, if we've sent in um, our money order, can we... Um, send in our 1099-A and OID. You can send it in to wherever you have to pay your uh, uh, income taxes, okay? The Treasury is sitting there, and uh, you can pay into that account there and then draw from that account. It's all, a lot of this is all by the IRS. Mm-hmm. Until I saw that, started seeing that yesterday, and then seeing, hey, Kansas City, uh, that's where all my 1096 uh, forms go also. 
But that's where they want all my payments to go for these penalties and everything is to Kansas City. Not to Georgia, because Georgia is the corporate IRS. They're the ones that are out there putting these claims against us and then trying to get us to put the money in there and then not knowing that we could turn around and pick it up because we're the admiralty. Yeah, you don't have to let it sit there for three years. You can turn around as soon as you put it in. You made the thing. Now you turn around and put your claim in against it. Mm -hmm. This is what the Federal Court of Claims is about. Also, against uh, the district court. But if you put your 1099-A in, okay, then the IRS has to uh, either accept it or deny it. If they deny it, then you go... What it says on the back of that penalty deal is you would go to the district court and then, if need be, go to the federal court of claims. Okay. But all you have to do is move the assets off of your ship using these money orders that I've got up there. Stop paying out of your back pocket. So does this uh, does this mean that the back side of the money order uh, is is one of the I've got to modify that, Tom, and post okay. a new one up there for uh, what this is going to be doing. Okay. Because and, and it will be basically being deposited into you uh, using that uh, routing number or whatever that treasury uh, routing number uh, into the warehouse or warehouse. Uh, number of uh, in my case it was 550 uh, 2012 12 okay so that was the treasury warehouse number and then basically I'm going to have that basically assigned under uh, my uh, and it gets attached to my postal savings account my postal passbook savings account, because everything you bring out off the ship onto land is going to be into the postal world. Okay. So we, okay. we wait to get the. So if you've got your passport, then you the nine-digit passport number is your account number. Hmm. So when we use the money in order to move it to the warehouse, we get the penalty letter, which basically gives us a claim number for our item in the warehouse. Is that, is that what you're saying? It gives you information there that you've got to look at, and then you've got to listen to what I just said about this. Okay. You've got the, your Social Security on one side of your four digits of your name. Then you've got another nine digits on the back side. The nine digits is going to be where it is held in the warehouse. Okay, that's a claim ticket. Right. And then the account that it's under is basically under uh, a postal or a passport. Uh, United States uh, postal savings account. Okay, postal passbook savings account. And that's the numbers on your uh, passport, your initial passport. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the one that they keep trying to send back to you. And so once once we get that uh, claim ticket, then we file a 1099-A with, uh, on that, with that claim, claim number to... Get, uh, acquire the funds. Yes, you would file a 1099A and claim it back using a 1096 and file it in. Right, okay. And basically the borrower is the warehouse, the treasury, the United States Treasury. And then you would use that uh, Warehouse number, warehouse 
addressing number as basically their identification number in the warehouse. Okay, yes. Then you could use your account number, your uh, savings account number down below, or your uh, number on the back of the Social Security. They're both postal numbers. They're on the back side. They're buried. They're underground. So they're postal. So either the number on the back of your Social Security card or your passbook, your passport, passbook, passport, passbook, savings account number, that nine-digit passport number is your account number, either one. And do we actually end up paying the penalty by including that in our 1099A? No. You pay the penalty right off the bat with the money order. Oh, okay. You include it in the money order. Okay. You you pay with the money order. You give it to them. Okay? Now, you have to come back and claim it using the 1099A and uh, the 1099 OID using a money order to make a payment back to you from that treasury account. So you do a mo- another modified money <laughs> order, but it's going to be paid to us. See, you can't use the money while it's on the ship. You have to get it off the ship, onto the land, and then you can draw it out of the warehouse and use it then. That's what they told one guy when he went to the uh, Federal Court of Claims. He said, you're still out at sea. We can't do anything for you. They use well, those after list after thinking about it, yeah, we need to come in and go to shore and bring the cargo off our ship to shore. Then we can use the cargo. But we can't get the cargo off the ship if we're not tied up to the dock. And we've got to order it off the ship. It's just not going to magically jump off that ship. And that's what we have to do with the money order to order it off the ship. Hopefully that makes a little sense to you people. Makes a lot of sense. I'm I'm just a little confused on the mechanics of our original amount we want, and the penalty amount. Is that a $5,000 penalty they gave you? No, 35000 Wow. <laughs> so we make the no. money order out for 35000 more than we yes, want? Yes, you make the money order out for what they want. Okay? If they come after you for taxes, you make the money order out for that amount. Okay. You put it in the warehouse. Now, like I said, all penalties... And all tariff taxes, which are income taxes for the 1913 tariff tax out there, income tax is a tariff tax on the usage of the Federal Reserve monetary system. Okay. Now, all tariff taxes have to go back to the nation. And we are the nation in admiralty. So we have to come in and claim it before we abandon it and let them claim it. Okay. So we yeah, see, that's what they've been doing. They've been just playing us for dummies, paying out of our back pocket all this income tax, and then mm-hmm. after three years, they go and pick it up, but they can't touch it until after three years. That's why these capper funds sit out there, is because they're holding the funds. They can only get it 
out of there after three years. So money that that was paid out of my pocket two years ago, I can I can claim back before yeah. they they grab it. Yeah. And see, that's what some people are being able to do using that uh, uh, payment with the money order using the passbook savings account. The passport number. Mm -hmm. We were just going about it the wrong way before. Well, we're still going about it pretty much the right way. Okay, but we need to, we want to we move more utilizing. assets. We want to get more assets off our boat. Right. We weren't in Admiralty before. No. Uh, well, late, lately I've been trying to keep everybody in Admiralty. <laughs> and, the, and the money orders and everything that I put up there now. So do you think the money orders that were put in where we weren't in Admiralty, do you think those are just kind of a lost cause? Well, they went to the Treasury, and I think we need to go to uh, the IRS warehouse. From what I'm looking at, it's the Treasury is out there in D.C., but the warehouse Basically, is located out here with the IRS. Okay. Because they've got the forms to where we can come in and claim it from the warehouse in the process. But some of the others, using the routing numbers and everything else in the Federal Reserve Bank to access it, yeah, that's still uh, a valid possibility. Now, we haven't gotten anything back from, uh, I don't know whether anybody's gotten anything back from uh, the Federal Reserve Banks that for the, the uh, Appendix 1 and the Attachment Bs or not to get uh, their black cards. But see, you still, just because you get a black card, you've got to know how to use that black card. You've got to know how to move the funds off the ship so that you can now access the funds using the black card. Mm -hmm. But you have to also know that you have to get in there and claim it before they come in and claim it away from you. Well, the banks have told us that they don't know how to claim it, so the money goes back to the Federal Reserve. They are, you trust a banker? No. Okay, enough said. <laughs> so you think they got it? Oh, hell yeah, they know how to do it. If you want to prove that to yourself, okay, uh, go into the Washington, D.C., uh bankruptcy website, court site, okay, and run through their module, testing module, okay? okay. And basically, it'll, it tells you most people that do that are attorneys that run through that module. And it'll show you how these attorneys are going in there and putting liens and everything else against our accounts. And then at the end of three years, basically, if we haven't claimed it back, then basically they can come in and pick it up as abandoned property. Yeah. That's why in a bankruptcy, you have three years to contest that bankruptcy. Talking to one guy about that, and he said, oh, shit, that's right. They had three years after my bankruptcy that I could have contested that. I said, yeah, after three years, it's all done. 
you can't uh, contest it anymore because now you abandoned what was sitting there. And see, that's what on a lot of these mortgages. Uh, you don't uh, see what's really going on, and basically you get in there and you've abandoned the funds in some of these court cases. You were really supposed to claim the funds out there after three years for the house because it was paid for at the end of three years. Unless you want to hear it. Well, I noticed on one of the credit cards that there um, were two columns, and it's almost like it was a double bookkeeping system where they really didn't um, minus my payment, but there was a column where they they had both payments that I made, and there was like $8,000 where they they had the payments. So there, I knew there was something fishy going on. Yes. And see, they try and hide that from you. They don't tell you that you've got the money sitting there. Uh-huh. Okay. And uh, one of the other forms that people need to look, especially if they got a mortgage, is the 1098 form. And go through that and try and analyze that form with the new understanding out here that we have in handling these taxes on the 1099A, the 1099C, and the 1099OID. We come in and we claim our assets, but you're going to be getting an original discount. You're going to be getting postal monetary system. So you're not getting the full value of that, and you never will, really, in their system. But you will get a feel-good when you turn around after you've done the 1099A, then you turn around and do a 1099OID, or you do the 1099OID first and then the 1099A. Doesn't make any difference. I'm going to send one in for... $900 $900 money order, and then I'm going to turn around and do a 1099 OID against it. And then I'm waiting for my 1099 A's. Now, you go and put the money into that account, and then in the warehouse, then you can turn around and write a 1099 C and have the cancellation of the debt with the money order being set off, sent out to whoever. So you make would make the money order out now to the other person, but you put it in with a 1099C into the Treasury warehouse, the IRS warehouse. So you first deposit the money into the warehouse off your ship. And we're going into the du jour IRS. That's the IRS that works with the United States Treasury and the du jour side, not the Department of the Treasury which is working over there for the corporate side endeavors. And that day you're in Kansas City. Yeah. Austin, Texas, another place that uh, some people basically uh, you can deposit uh, into uh, Cincinnati or into Ogden Warehouse. Like with your income tax. That's normally where those two places 
you make your check out to the treasury uh, there. But those uh, IRS treasury warehouses this are tied Atlanta, together. Georgia. So you'll be able to draw when you put your money order in using your 1099A or 1099OID or uh, and see you would do a money order to make a payment back to you. Everything is done by money orders. That's what that uh, Act of 1872 or 73 was, uh, Chapter 335 states that everything was supposed to be done by money orders. That you put a 1099A, C, or uh, OID with that money order when you want to direct it back out of the warehouse. Mm. Now, you can make a payment into the warehouse anytime you want to. And see that 1040 or 1041 you put a voucher with that money order and make it payable to the Department or to the United States Treasury. And then you send that where that uh, 10, 1040 or 1041 says to send it to. And then that will be your warehouse there. But your Social Security number, if you've got a passport, it's tied to that postal uh, passbook savings account. Questions? Yeah, I got a question. Those those forms you're talking about that we need from the IRS, what what are they called? The 1099A, the 1099C, the 1099OID, and the 1096 form. Oh, okay. I, all right. I'm I'm sorry, man. I, I thought you meant. All right. I apologize, Patrick. Thank no, you. that's that's the forms you need to get from the IRS, and then uh, the 1040 and the 1041. 1040 if you've got, uh, if you just have your Social Security number. But if you've got an EIN, an estate EIN, or a foreign grant or trust EIN, then you would use the 1041 voucher. And those you can download right off the IRS website and just print them out. And then just fill them in, clip them off. You just have to send uh, the bottom third of the page in with your money order. Move some of your cargo off your ship. Start utilizing what's being held out there in your ship. Not doing you a damn bit of good sitting on that damn ship. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. And then, like I said the other day, any court action you go have to get called into or something, you basically come in and say, the venue of this court has now been changed into admiralty, and I am the president uh, judge in this admiralty court case. And basically, I am ordering you, I am pardoning uh, all charges in the process here. As the president, I can pardon it. I can also veto any of your corporate laws that they do not apply to me in admiralty. And I order you to set these things off and that you send me the records and purge your records of any action here. 
I will store those in my presidential library, just like Nixon and all the other nitwit presidents out there. They all had their own presidential libraries for their records. You can do the same thing. What's good for the goose is good for the ganders. Okay, any other questions? Patrick, yeah, can you Patrick, hear me? Patrick, you used three words when you talked about residents. You talked about permanent, principal, and something else. Protected. Oh, protected. Yeah, there's really only two words. is principal, and that's the man, and then the protected, that's the woman. Right. And then you take the P's off of both of those words and put it in front of resident, and you have to have a resident address, yeah. okay? You do not use CO in front of your address. You've got to have a permanent location. Now, later on, you can go to Kenny Bunk, Fort Maine, and uh, Camp David and everything else if you want to, but basically you've got to have a permanent land base port, okay? Just like in uh, the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. The Admiralty was in the fort on the land 90% of the time. Only when they went, manned their ship and went out to uh, shoot it up with other people did they go to sea. Otherwise, they stayed in their fort. And they stood over the corporations, too. Admiralty does. Okay, next question. Patrick, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I applied for a EIN number for my state, and they sent it back after I had filled it out and said number 7A and B need to be filled out. Uh, do I actually need to take my name and reverse it? Because I know my reverse ma name from the military side would be uh, don't have a social. Uh, basically, I did it. Uh, in a roundabout way, I called up the Atlanta office of the IRS, and I chewed them out for about a half hour. And uh, they said that they would take care of this for me. And about a week, week and a half later, I got an estate EIN out of Cincinnati. So uh, what you're asking, ask the group site there. And basically uh, talk with some of the people on the site that basically have gone and use the SS4, okay? Hey, Patrick, she can, she can actually use her maiden name and then use her now name as the other person, and it works. Did you get that? The maiden name. Yeah, you're, you're using your maiden name, and then you can use for the executor or executrix the name you're using now. Oh, okay. Okay, I got you. Yeah, and I would try and address that, you're, uh, uh, that the living person is going to be uh, standing in admiralty as the president, an admiralty president or whatever, instead of putting down uh, executive or uh, executor or anything like that. Make it admiralty uh President. On the SS4? Yeah. Why okay. not? Okay. Got it. Now start using Admiralty in everything you address yourself as. Uh, I'll get you there. Your house. Basically, is your, your house is an Admiralty house. Hmm. Interesting. It's a protected zone. It's a presidential White House. You ever watch the movies when people are overseas and basically the bad guys are chasing them 
and the guy gets shows his passport, gets into the consulate or whatever, and then uh, the other guys are trying to come in behind him, the local police or something like that, and basically the Marines stop the other people from coming in after him. That's because that's a protected zone. That's admiralty in that area. Yeah, I just saw that in Jason Bourne's first movie. Yeah, it's an admiralty zone. Right. See, everybody want ambassadorship. No, you want admiralty. Okay, so, any other questions? So can can we end up sending in uh, the 1099s and uh, the uh, with the money order, or do we wait until we get the IRS claim number? Like I said, you can turn around and take a 1040 or a 1041, make a money order payable to the United States Treasury, and you send it where that 1040 or 1041 says to send it to. There's three places, I think, on that 1040 or 1041 form to send that 1041 in. Right. You can make a payment any time you want, any time of the year. You don't have to wait around for tax time. You want to put 10 million dollars off your ship into the treasury warehouse do it okay. it's going to be filed under your social security number your social security number then now attaches that to your uh, since it's now in the system here it's going to be attached to the postal Passbook savings system. Either under your number on the back of your Social Security card or on uh, your passbook or your passport nine digit number. But you move the assets off your ship, your registered ship, using your routing number, your EIN number, routing number, and your uh, registration number, your certificate of live birth registration number. That's the number of your American citizen ship, all capital ship. See, we shouldn't have to use the uh, certificate of live birth. We just need to use the money order with the account number. Then, like guys that have uh, military uh, on the first form of your DD-214, you should have had your selective service number on there. That is your claim, your account number for your military bounty. The first one always has the most numbers on it. My second one doesn't have my uh, selective service number on it. You get a secondary passport. They always send you the original passport you had back to you. 
Whether you kept it or not, that's your problem. But basically, they always send it back to you. I tried to send it in to the Secretary of State twice, and they keep returning it to me. Well, that's because that is my passbook savings account number. The other passports are on a 10-year cycle just for travel. But see, they try, and so many people just disregard stuff after they get something new. They throw the old away when that's really the one that they should have been keeping to track of the most. I don't know how many people have thrown their uh, or their mother or father basically threw their hospital birth certificates away. As soon as they got that certificate of live birth, they threw the other one away. Hmm. Because they were told, this is the one you need to use. This is the one you need to use. They were lied to, and they believed the lie. Just like Hitler said, you tell a person a lie often enough, and they will begin to believe the lie. And the bigger, the better. Yeah. So anyway, I want you to take a little time. I'll try and post these uh, special um, modified uh, money orders up here addressing uh, that we're coming in, and then basically on the other one, uh, when we put the 1099A in, we're claiming that basically all penalties and all uh, income taxes have to go back to the Admiralty, and we're coming in in Admiralty. So we can claim it out of their hands under Admiralty. Therefore, they have no valid claim. Admiralty stands higher in any claim out here. It will cancel their claims. Yeah, when you turn the fan on, the smoke gets blown away. Hmm. <laughs> ah, that's true. <laughs> now, see, so you just got to start hopping and pumping a little more. That also shows that you're alive. Okay, any questions from newbies out there? Yeah, we've had a few come in this week. Uh, uh, One asked on on the site today about going after the uh, the non-national no, no, oh, I'm only asking if they're on the site, Tom. If there's any newbies out there that have any questions, come in and ask them right now. Okay. Very good. Well, I found out something new here. Can you hear me? What you okay. find out? Uh, I found out if you write the word Frank across your mail in red ink, that would suffice as being a stamp. Across the stamp? 
All right, you can look this up in Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition, page 787. The word Frank, in all caps, right? Look the word up, Frank. Okay. Right there across the what, middle. What does it say? If it's in all caps, there's four. Frank has four letters. What do those four letters stand for? Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me just get the page down. Frank is five letters. Huh? Frank? Okay. F A R N K. Yeah. Now there should be you, you look there should it. be a phrase then that it's standing for. Well, it's, it's in the Black Law Dictionary. I didn't. Need okay, I'll take a look at it and see. Okay. That that's the word that's the word that is used for all senators, the president, all of them. Their mail is frank. It's free. Right, free. Right. Oh. It's called Franken mail. Well, they see you still got to get a stamp. No, actually, you can actually, you, you can actually write it across there and read it, or get your stamp, get the get your statement and stamp it across. It'll hang. Okay. Up. It'll actually go yeah. through. I tried it on my or, own just to get the test, and it went through. Or you just go like what I was doing there. You just say uh, first dash class mail postage and uh, uh, fees prepaid. And then put your permit number because you've already paid uh, uh, the boatman to go to hell. <laughs> see, see, that's where all, that's where all this mail is going. It's going to hell <laughs> because well, it's going to the cool. dead world. Okay, right? You're going to Hades. Right. So it's just like in Roman mythology. You're paying the boatman to go over to hell. <laughs> well, I guess that's why they say they're healing you. Uh huh. Yep. That's how they communicate. They have to heal you. Yeah, I think it's uh, Piercy Jackson and uh, uh, the Lightning Thief. The very first one that he had out there, I think it was made uh, 2010 or something like that. He just made one other one, uh, Percy Jackson and uh, the Sea Monsters or something. Uh, but basically, they're dealing in Roman mythology. Yep. See, they've been telling us this stuff in a lot of these movies out here, bits and pieces of it. The Pirates of the Caribbean, basically there again. They ended up having to go, and uh, like uh, the Black Pearl, okay? It was a dead ship. Uh, the people during the daytime were just skeletons. But at nighttime, they had their bodies back, and they pillaged everything at nighttime. Well, isn't that what the bankers are doing most of the time? They're pillaging us at the nighttime, Okay? And then old uh, Jack Spell was like most people out here, kept wanting to go and claim the Black Pearl back. But he found out that it was cursed because it was operating on, under the curse was Cortez's, Cortez's gold, a fictionary gold. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically that is what the whole Social Security, this whole postal monetary system is a fictionary monetary system. Yeah, I had a guy call me today about a uh, child support situation where he was told to go speak to the person. And I noticed they called that guy on the little boat go for the person. And I noticed only... One kind of person in society I know even carry a purse, that's a female. Mm-hmm. And so I guess if you come in into Admiralty, is. you switch that case around into Admiralty, and see, every contract you have out here, okay, all of these uh, uh, licenses, all these uh, certificates, they're all uh, insurance policies. And the whole game is that they are trying to 
get you out of your insurance policy, to raid your insurance policy. They're just like 90% of the insurance adjusters out here. They will screw you in a heartbeat if they can because they're going to get a dividend for doing that when they get back to their home office. The more they can save the company, the more they're going to get a little kickback. I guess you're right. That's why they call it public policy. That's an insurance policy. Yeah. You can only sue the cops or these people out here based on their public policy. You can't sue them on public law because they only have to deal with policies and procedures. That's their policy. Yeah, that's their whole MO. Right? Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I got one more. Okay. Have you ever heard of the of the stamp duty, the stamp duty act? Uh, yeah, yeah. I looked at that at one time. And I can't remember what what I found in that. But uh, yeah, like uh, what we found out that basically since they went into the postal system and then uh, took most of our uh, assets out of it. Uh, See, the Postal Union out here is a corporation. So the whole postal system is uh, basically operating, borrowing money from us, from our uh, estates or our vessels, putting liens against our vessels. So that is why everything is prepaid. They really owe us the free passage. But we now have a permit number when you use your uh, pass, passport or the number on the back of your Social Security card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, that number on the back is a is it in the dead world, okay? The Social Security on the front side was only a transmitting utility number to allow the funds to come off your vessel. (laughs) But since it's on one card, that Social Security number is also tied to the number on the back of the card. They're both routing numbers, but one is the key routing number in the dead world. The other is basically an interfacing that can go between the two worlds. Yeah, boy, you've got a lot of noise in the background. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, Tom, go ahead and call tonight and basically okay. let people think about this, and uh, uh, we'll talk some more on Sunday night. Yeah, I, I think it's really understandable. I have to work out of my brain the exact mechanics of it, but then well, sure yeah, just uh, take a look. Take a look at uh, if you've got an old IRS document. Uh, look at the 1040s. Uh, make sure you've got the 1099 OIDs, 1099As, 1099C, and 1096 forms ordered. Okay, if you don't. Get on the phone or get on the uh, internet and get them ordered tomorrow. Well, uh, the forms I ordered in December arrived ten days ago. Yeah, I got mine a few days ago too. Yeah. Yeah, they sent me a whole box. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I've got. Uh, I haven't gotten any 1099As. I've gotten 1099Cs, OIDs, and. Uh, a bunch of 1096 forms, but uh, really need a bunch of those 1099As. Ah, oh my. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, you that's said the one to, you, can you mentioned to, to take a look at the 1098s, too. Yeah, or people that have mortgages. Hmm. So we'll be using mostly 1098-9As. So well, up nice. yeah, most of the time, you're going to be doing a 1099 OID either with a 1099-C or a 1099-A. So the most ones you're going to use is the 1099 OIDs. Okay, okay. I have to check my numbers and see how much I have. See, you've got to get, you've got to try and get the full value. They split it up when they put it into the warehouse in the postal system. You're not getting the full value out of the thing because of inflation and everything out here. Okay. Yeah, it's it's in a discounted monetary system. Inflation is a very heavy discount. Yeah, but it'll make you feel a little better to get something back. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. We'll and talk we'll, to you guys we'll, later. Take care. We'll the documents, and thank you very much, Patrick. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night now. Good night. Good night, John. Good night, John.